Welcome back to the stream. I'm Brad Edwards. Dark shadows, fedoras and trench coats, corrupt cops, shady characters working on both sides of the law, femme fatales, stories with no happy endings, stylish and inglorious black and white. They're the elements of film noir. And a national film festival celebrating those dark movies makes a detour to the windy city, noir city, Chicago, opens this weekend at the Music Box Theater. Joining us now is author, film scholar, and film noir expert, Alan Rohde. And he is with the Film Noir Foundation. Mr. Rohde, it is a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure uh, coming back to the city of Big Shoulders and the city of noir for our 15th year at the Music Box for Noir City. And this year we're celebrating, uh, we've programmed all films from 1948, which uh, Eddie Muller and I considered to be the ground zero epicenter of film noir. And we've even included some films that were shot on location in Chicago. So uh, looking forward to getting back there and seeing old friends making new ones and uh, screening these great movies in Chicago. You're going to be introducing several movies at Noir City. Uh, so there is a lot of debate about what film noir is, and, 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 and it's part of the beauty of it. Originally, it was a term coined by a critic to describe these dark, gritty, whodunit movies that came out in the 1940s. So what is the generally accepted definition, your definition of film noir? Well, it, it's, it's a confluence. It's almost an unconscious movement that came out of mm -hmm. Hollywood in after World War II, which was a confluence of uh, hard-boiled detective writing, immigrate directors and photographers that uh, used Chiricusco photography, like the scene from the movie The Killers that mm -hmm. is my background this morning. And um, I think a lot of it has to do with the post-World War II realism that affected the culture. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a shorthand expression I always like, that if you're watching a crime-based movie and the protagonist gets screwed over in the first five minutes and it goes downhill from there, that's film noir. <laughs> wow, that's a great way to think of it. And. Uh, Oversimplification, but a beautiful simplification for, for kind of for the, the lay people like us. Uh, the Film Noir Foundation exists to preserve and restore lost and damaged film noirs. Uh, so the fest is not just a celebration of these movies, it's also a way to raise money for restoration efforts, uh, which is critical to, to saving, you know, not only the films themselves, but to just say a piece and a moment in time in American history. Uh, that affected so much when it comes to artistry, right? Absolutely. Uh, we have preserved uh, and saved about 20 films, uh, some of them international films from Argentina. And I think by preserving these films, and this started when uh, we couldn't get the films that mm -hmm. we wanted to show at our festival. And we found that uh, these films had just disappeared, fallen into the cracks, there weren't prints anymore and now so much of everything is digital but uh that is the experience we're saving because we're not these films were made in the case of uh, uh this festival in 1948 78 years ago to be seen wow. in it with a group with an audience in the dark on a big screen so uh the way i think eddie and i look at this is we're not just preserving the films by having these festivals and raising the money with our merchandise and selling tickets, uh, we're preserving the theatrical experience, which yeah. post-COVID is, is in a lot of danger, quite frankly. So uh, I think it's a win-win for people who are aficionados of classic film and film generally. Yeah, and I think uh, that point hits home with a recent uh you know, surge over ticket sales with the Barbenheimer uh, phenomenon. I think people realized what they were missing out on, on that Absolutely. group experience. Uh, two films that are showing, Chicago Deadline 
and call Northside 777 center around Chicago reporter so naturally as a megalomaniac news anchor tell me about the news people news guy stories uh, well, that the, 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 the Northside 777 curious. is a 1948 film that was based on a factual true story mm -hmm. uh, and this was when at 20th Century Fox under Daryl Zanuck uh, they started a producing what I call docu-noirs, where they would take hmm. a fact-based story, put a voiceover narration, have a realistic newsroom, uh, go partially on location in Chicago to film this. And so this was, this was a true story of an innocent man that was railroaded into a murder conviction. Wow. And you have Jimmy Stewart uh, uh, really kind of starting a new type of role for Jimmy Stewart. This mm. is not Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. He's a uh, very skeptical reporter assuming that the, uh, the, the innocent man is guilty, and he's played by Richard Connie. And then gradually he becomes convinced that wow. he was innocent, and you see this scene here where he's telling his editor, I was, I believed he was guilty, but now I feel differently. And it's got a great cast with Lee J. Cobb, and it's directed by Henry Hathaway, and it's really a, a fact-based, a part of Chicago's history. Uh, very, very strong movie. So we're, at, we're really uh, lucky that we're gonna be showing that Saturday on the 26th of August at uh, 6.45. I'm fascinated by that one. You got it all. Jimmy Stewart, the reporter, the 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 the, the true story takeoff, and the you know uh, almost the first innocence project, if you will. So a lot has changed since the 40s, from the filming technology to our culture. Certain Absolutely. themes, though. Uh, and certain things aren't aging well. Uh, but at the core, film noir hits on the basic human condition, greed, love, and so forth. Yes, it's about the technology, but first and foremost, it's about the emotion, the characters, uh, like news. So that old, dated feel, um, part of what makes film noir kind of so much fun, right? Well, I think film noir is really the connection point of classic film to a new and younger generation. Hmm. And even if a younger generation will come and see these films and say, why are the men wearing all these hats? Why are doctors mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes in the hospital? You know, why do women dress the way they do? But when you get beyond those cultural accoutrements, uh, you find out, as you just said, the basic human condition of lust, larceny, greed, love, betrayal. Uh, the technology has changed, uh, the culture has changed, but we as emotional human beings haven't changed that much. And I think it's really for these films, it's all in the story. And that's why mm -hmm. these films uh, have remained so compelling and draw an audience. Yeah, and who can say that eight decades later, especially on a visual medium? I mean, the, the story you were just describing me, the plot line of Chicago 777, basically top any, tap any Hollywood leading man, drop him into the Stewart role, and it would be a hit today, right? Yeah, I, I think that there's I think that there's some truth to that. Although, I think that because some of the culture has changed. In other words, newspapers are not obviously what they were. Right. Everything is online now. Everybody is a critic. Everybody is an author, mm -hmm. and I think uh, media people, as portrayed by Jimmy Stewart in this film, were really working class people. They were right. working class people, and they were trying to keep the politicians and the bigwigs honest. And now sometimes with our media, it's hard to tell the difference between those two, uh, between those two groups of people. But a little bit about Chicago. Chicago was such a hotbed uh, going back to the days of the 20s of Al Capone and then the outfit as such a controlling feature in Chicago life and Chicago politics. Uh, a lot of the writers of these films came from Chicago. Ben Hecht, hmm. who was probably the greatest screenwriter, uh, his papers are uh, in, in a Chicago library. He came up as a reporter in Chicago. John Bright, who wrote Beer and Blood that was made into The Public Enemy, a longtime Hollywood screenwriter who was blacklisted. And Jonathan Latimer was another Chicago reporter who became a great screenwriter and made 
uh, some films that we're going to show, I believe, The Big Clock and uh, a number of other films that he made, uh, he wrote for John Farrow at Paramount. So I think Chicago has a rich noir tradition. Uh, Chicago is like if you liken film noir to a mine, Chicago had rich veins of film noir <laughs> running through it all the way back to the turn of the 20th century. Not even more looking forward to your event. And I can say there are some still hard-boiled, grizzled uh, investigative reporters that consider themselves a working class, and I'm one That's of them. That's so. good. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear that. I'm yeah, glad to hear that. I, up, I, I still get a, a newspaper fight. delivered to my house every morning. Right. I want the feel of a real newspaper. I'm old school. What You're can I tell you? Just reading the paper this morning. Uh, Alan Rohde, author, film scholar, film noir expert. Thank you for being a friend of the stream here. The Film Festival, Noir City, Chicago, opens Friday night with two great noirs, Key Largo. And The Lady from Shanghai, all 18 movies playing at the famed Music Box Theater. We have a link to the schedule on our website. Thanks for having me, and hope to see you there. Mr. Rohde, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.